Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT official guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we will do some data sufficiency problems that you will find on page number 209. Turn to it, please. Make sure the book is in front of you. Turn to page 209, the very first problem that we see there, number 314. Let's see what it says. It says that we have a total, total workforce of n people. We have a total workforce of n people of which total females are f. And then of those females we are told that x of them are new females. New female employees that is. The question simply is how many people do have how many people do we have in the firm? What's the total number of people that we have in the firm. Let's see what they tell us. Problem number one tell, uh, rather, statement number one tells us that the odds the odds of choosing a female at random is two thirds. The odds of choosing a female at random is one third. Now what we can get out of this one what this tells us is that we must have one third female, rather, odds of choosing a female at random is two third. We must have one third males and two third females. In other words, however many number of males we have, we have twice as many females. That's, that's all it tells us. If you want to express in terms of M, we have, if, if we have M number of males, we have 2 times M female because the odds of choosing a female is 2 thirds, 2 out of every out, out of every 3. And that's all it is. All we can get, all we can get out of this is that N equals M plus 2M. And that's all. There is no way, there is no way for us to figure out what N actually is. The first, first statement by itself is not sufficient. First statement by itself is not sufficient. Let's put it here. A D. B C E. Since the first statement by itself is not sufficient, we know now the answer cannot be A or D. It will have to be either B, C or E. Let's look at second statement. Second statement. Second statement tells us that half of female Half of female employees are new. Half of all female employees are new. Again, the only thing that we can get out of it, only thing we can get out, get out of it is that since we are told X of them are new and half of them are female, all it tells us is that we have half, fem half new female employees and half that were already there. So the total number of female employees that we have is made up of this thing. There is nothing in here that will tell us what N is. Second statement by itself is again not enough by itself. Again, putting the first statement and two second statement together, we can see because it, because second statement gives us no information at all, nothing at all about n. Putting the two statements together will still not get us anywhere. The answer is e. The answer is e. We do not. We simply do not have sufficient data here. Data sufficiency right there. Number 315. Number 315 says the next one. Number 315 it says is is x plus 1 over y plus 1 greater than x over y. Before we do anything at all, let's just simplify this thing. Let's cross multiply and simplify it. Bring the y over there, so y times x plus 1 is greater than x times y plus 1. It's 
strictly speaking, we are taking a gamble right now that these two quantities are positive. So this this, this figure is x times y plus y is greater than x x x y and x x y and x y is going to cross out. So what we want to establish here, what the question is asking is, is y greater than x? And that's all that the, that's all they are looking for. Is y greater than x? Let's see what the first statement tells us. The first statement tells us that 0 is less than x and x is less than y. There you go. x is less than y, which means y is greater than x. First statement by itself does the job beautifully. A, D, B, C, E. Since the first statement by itself is enough, if x is less than y, then obviously y is greater than x. As it cannot be B, C, or E, it will have to be either A or D. Second statement goes on to tell us, goes on to tell us that x times y is greater than 0. x times y is greater than 0. Let's see what we can do with this thing. The easiest thing here, simplest thing here would be to just simply plug in numbers. If x times y is greater than 0, just plug in 2 and 3. 2 times 3 is greater than 0, in which case x is zero, 2 and y is 3. In that case y is greater than x or, or it could just as easily be 3 times 2, in which case y is not greater than x. So here the answer is yes. The question was is y greater than x? The answer is yes, and here it is no. Second statement by itself does not do anything. Second statement by itself it does not enable us to be able to answer the question that is being asked here. Is y greater than x? We don't know. The answer is A. But the first statement by itself did the job beautifully. Number I don't know why I'm having so much difficulty with this thing. Theories. Number 316. Number 316. I think I'm going to get a new, new paper towel. Number 16 says, do at least 60% of students walk. Do at least 60% of our students walk to school? We are trying to figure out, do at least 60% of our students walk to school? Let's see what the first statement tells us. Tells us The first statement tells us that at least, at least 60% of females do. At least 60% of females do. Well that's good. That means that uh, we know about females. What about the guys? What about the guys? We know nothing about how many boys walk to school. So we do know that at least fifth. The question was, do at least 60% of our students walk? Yes, now we know that at least 60% of the girls walk to school. What about the boys? The first statement by itself, A, D, B, C, E. First statement by itself does not enable us to answer the question fully. The answer cannot be A or D, it would have to be B, C or E. Second statement says that uh, walkers are two times non-walkers. There are twice as many students in our school who walk as opposed to the ones who do not walk. Well, there you go. If walkers are two times as many, that means that, means that the walkers must be two-thirds of the students, two-thirds of students, because we were just told that two times as many students walk as this number, number of students who do not walk, number of walkers two times, there you go, walkers must be two-thirds of the students, two-thirds of the students is greater than 60%, the question was, do at least 60% walk, the answer is yes, second statement by itself is enough, the answer is B, the answer is B, not because the answer turned out to be affirmative, not because we are able to say yes. I'm going to get out of the camera for a second here because I need to, I need to clean my nose a little bit. The answer is answer is B, not because we are able to give the answer in affirmative, but because we are able to give an answer. Even if this answer happened to be no, even if it turned out that the answer were no, still the answer would have been B. 
because the question was do we have sufficient data to be able to answer the, answer the question either in affirmative or negative. Here it just turns out that the answer is affirmative. Yes, we do know now that at least 60% of the students walk to, walk to school because we are told two times as many students walk to school as the ones who don't walk, which means two thirds of them walk. More than 60% walk. Number 317. Number 317. Let's see what we can do here. Number 317. Ah, number 317 is a little bit more involved. We have a plumber. We have a plumber who charges charges $92 if a job finishes in less than four hours and half and twenty three dollars per hour if job takes more than four hours. In other words, his minimum charge is four hours, obviously because the guy has to spend the time driving back and forth to your house. So whether the job takes five minutes or it takes four hours, you're gonna to have to pay a flat rate of $92 when he shows up and shows, when he comes to your house and shows his pretty face. If the job happens to take more than four hours, then he, then he charges you by the hour, because by that time he has already earned his $92 minimum that he wants, and he goes by the hour strictly, which is $23 per hour if it takes more than four hours. We are told that it took a it took a total of total of seven hours to do to do two jobs. Not one job, but two jobs. Two separate jobs, that is. Question is how much how much did he charge for the two jobs? How much did how much did he get? How much did he charge for having done the two jobs? Let's see what they tell us. Let's let's see what they tell us. Let's put it on the on the top there, or maybe we can put it here. We still have room. But let's see what the statement one tells us. The statement one tells us that he charged ninety-two dollars. Or one of the jobs. He charged ninety-two dollars for one of the two jobs. The problem here is that we do know now that there were two jobs that he did. There were two jobs that he did, job number one and job number two. And our job is to figure out how much did we pay him altogether for having done these two jobs. And that's what we're trying to figure out. How much did we pay him for the two jobs? We do know now that he be paid him $92 for one of the jobs. What we don't know is that maybe the job number one took him four hours, in which case we'll have to pay three hours here. So this would be $92 and this will simply be three times 23. Or maybe job number one took only one hour, in which case we'll have to pay him $92 here because $92 is flat rate up to four hours and then we'll still have to pay him for six hours, six times 23 here. It could be anything. It could be anything. Maybe it's half an hour here, six and a half hour here. We don't know. The first statement by itself is not enough. First statement by itself is not enough to, for us to be able to figure out how much we paid him total. Answer cannot be A or D. Let's see what the second statement tells us. Maybe second statement gives us some more useful information and maybe putting it together will do the job. Who knows? Second statement tells us that he charged $138 for one of the jobs. One of the two jobs. There we go. If we paid him $138 for one of the two jobs, then obviously that particular job must have taken more than four hours because up to four hours he just charges $92. So now all we have to figure out is 
if we paid him $138 at the rate of $23 per hour, all we have to figure out is how many hours is that. Once we have that figured out, we know we know he, he worked total of, how many hours did we say? He worked total of seven hours. Let's figure out how many hours we worked here, and then we can figure out how much we paid him for the other job. 138 divided by 23, where can we do it? Let's do it right here. We are trying to figure out 138 divided by 23 is how much. So stay with me in the story, okay? Stay with me in the story. Half of half of 100, half of 200 is 100, and half of 30 is 15. So that's five hours. 20, 23 times 10 is 230. Half of that is 115, but we paid him 138. Let's let's add another 23. See see what happens. I am hopeful because 3 plus 5 is 8, and that's what we're looking at. The unit digit matches. That's why I'm hopeful. You see. 23, 5, 3 and a 5, the unit is missed, that, that's why I'm hopeful. So 8, there you go, 138. So that means this represents 6 hours. This represents 6 hours. Are you with me? If that represents 6 hours, then we are done. The job is, we, have, we finished. The second statement by itself is more than enough for us to be able to figure out how much we paid him total. We paid him $138 for one job and for the other job, here he worked six hours, the other one he worked only one hour, but even though he only worked one hour, we have to pay a flat rate of $92. Because that is his minimum rate for coming to your house. Flat rate of four hours minimum, $92. So what that works out to be, that's not our concern. We're not interested in what, how much we exactly paid. What we're interested in is that we are able to figure out how much we paid, how much we should have paid him if we wanted to figure it out. Second statement by itself does the job. Was the second statement by itself or two statements together? No, that was second statement by itself because second statement tells us that we paid him $38 for one of the job. If we paid him $38 for one of the job, that job must have taken him six hours. If that job took six hours, then the other job must have taken one hour. So this is what we paid him for one job. The other job that took him one hour, even though it's only one hour, he still gets paid $92. Second statement by itself is enough. It's quite enough. The answer is B. 138, or oh, rather, oh, I don't know where 138 came from, 318. That is sufficiently probably is what we are doing obviously. 318, let's see what we have there. 318 is the penultimate problem, 318. We are told that X and Y are positive. They are positive, they are positive numbers. The question is, is X plus Y over Y plus 1 greater than X over Y? Greater than X over Y. So let's multiply, cross multiply here. And here we can cross multiply legitimately because we are told that they are both positive. What, what we did earlier, what I did earlier in the problem, uh, problem number 315 was legally not, not correct, technically not correct because we were not really told that those quantities were positive in the denominator. I just took a chance, I just took a gamble. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes it's good to be lazy. 318. Let's cross multiply, see what happens. So y times x plus 1, y times x plus 1 has to be greater than x times y plus 1. Let's cross, open it up, x, 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 y plus y has to be greater than x, y plus x, x, y is going to drop out when we subtract it. So the question simply is, is y greater than x? That's what they're asking here. They're asking here, is y greater than x? That's what we have to answer. We know x and y are positive. We know x and y are positive. The question is, is y greater than x? Let's see what they tell us. Let's, let's see what they tell us in statement one. Statement 1 tells us that x is greater than 1. But well, that's great. It's good to know that x is greater than 1, but simply knowing B, C, E, simply knowing that x is more than 1 tells us nothing at all about whether or not x is greater than y. That's what we are interested in. We, are not, we don't care whether x is greater than 1. Is it greater than y? That's, or, or less than y? That's what we want to find out. Is x greater than y or less than y? That's what we want to find out. Simply knowing that it's more than 1 doesn't do anything. First statement by itself is not enough. The answer cannot be A or D. Answer would have to be either A. Answer would have to be either B, C, or E. Let's look at second statement. Second statement tells us that x is less than y. There you go. There you go. 
If x is less than y, y must be greater than x. The answer is yes. Is y greater than x? The answer is yes. Again, the point here is not the point here is not that the answer is affirmative. The point is we are able to answer yes or no to the question is y greater than x? Yes, it is greater than x. No, it is not greater than x. As long as we are able to answer the question, second statement by itself is sufficient. The answer is B. The answer is B. Let's do the very last problem on the on, on, on that page 319 and that will be the end of it. I hope I was not going, I hope I wasn't going at too much of a leisurely pace. But there we go. It's also not too, too much fun to go try to try to try to rush things. Let's find a balance. A and B we are told are positive integers. So we know they are positive and we know they are whole numbers. The question here is, is A over B less than 9 over 11? That is what we have to establish. Is A over B less than 9 over 11. Let's cross multiply first. Let's cross multiply because we know B is positive. We can cross multiply without affecting the inequality sign. See here, something like this here, I would not have taken a chance unless they tell us that uh, they, are, they are positive. So let's cross multiply. So the question here is, is 11 times A less than 9 times B? That's what we want to find out. Let's put it here. Is 11 times A less than 9 times B? As long as we can answer that question either in a yes or no, then this statement is sufficient. Let's look at the first statement. Let's look at the first statement. The first statement tells us that A over B is less than 0.818. I'm going to change the marker. It is annoying me. I don't know why it does not write properly. What can we do here? If A over B is less than point less than point eight one eight, we can cross multiply, and that tells us that A is less than B times point eight one eight. Are you with me so far? Stay with me in this story. It's very important that you stay in the story with, with me. So we have established that A is less than point eight one point eight one eight times B, but we're not interested in what a is less than compared to b? We are interested in how does 11a, how does 11 times a compare to b? That's what we are interested in. So the simplest thing to do here is to multiply both sides by 11. Let's multiply both sides by 11 and see what happens. So 11 times a is less than, all you have to figure out what that is. So 818 times 11. Stay with me in the story. Okay, stay with me in the story. Here we go. 11 times 8 is 88. 8 carry 8. Do you understand what we are doing here? We are not multiplying one digit at a time. I am just multiplying by 11 altogether. 11 times 8 is 88. 8 carry 8. 11 times 1 is 11 plus 8 is 19. 9 carry 1. 11 times 8 is 88. 8 years plus 1 is 89. Well, there you go. So what we find here is that 11 times A is less than 8.998B. If 11 times A is less than 8.998B, which we know is less than 9B, which we know is less than 9B, then 11 times A must be less than 9B. The answer is yes, it is less. Again, the point here is not the answer. The point here is not that the answer is affirmative. The point is that we are able to give a definitive answer either in affirmative or negative. The first statement does the job beautifully. The first statement does the job beautifully. A, A, D, B, C, E. So we know the answer has to be either A or a D. It cannot be B, C, or E. Let's see what the second statement tells us. Second statement tells us that B over A, B over A is greater than 1.223. 1.223. Let's cross multiply, see what we get. If we cross multiply, we get B is greater than 1.223 times A. 
Again, we're not interested in how B compares to the A. We are interested in how does 9 times B compare to A. That's what we are interested in. Let's find out, shall we? Since we, are, since we are interested in 9 times B, let's multiply both sides by 9, just like we did before. Multiply both sides by 9 is very simple. Let's keep it separate. So now we have to figure out this quantity. 1.223 times 9. 1.223 times 9. Let's see, what, let's see what that gives us, shall we? 9 3 is a 27. 7 carry 2. 9 to the 18 plus 2 is 20, 0 carry 2, 9 to the 18 plus 2 is 20, 0 carry 2, 9 on the 9 plus 2 is 11. There you go. Pi golly. So this tells us that 9 times B is greater than 11.007A. If 9 times, if 9 B is greater than 11.007A, 11 11 then it must be, that implies that 9 times b must be greater than 11b. If it's greater than 11.007, rather, I meant a. If, if it's greater than 11.007a, then it must be greater than 11a. And there we go, we are able to answer the question. 9 times b is in fact greater than 11. Again, the answer is yes which means the second statement by itself is also sufficient. Second statement by itself is also quite sufficient for us to be able to give the answer. And therefore, the correct answer is D. Each statement, each statement by itself, I'm looking for my cat here. Each statement by itself was quite sufficient for us to be able to answer the question that was being asked, which was, is 11 times A greater than less than, less than 9B? That was the end of this page. We're not going to start a new page, obviously. Tomorrow we'll meet again and we'll do some uh, multiple choice problems and we'll continue our journey. I forgot to tell you at the beginning of the video, like I, I, like I, I do every, every time, that if you wish to get hold of me, if you like to work with me, if you would like to hire me as your tutor to get you, to get you ready for the exam, to get you ready for the GMAT, if you want to work with me, you can reach me at Keshwani Prep, that's P-R-E-P, -E Keshwani Prep, at iCloud.com. Keshwani Prep at iCloud.com. Send me an email and we'll see what we can do. Alright? Bye now.